Um, I work at Meta as a senior staff engineer. Been there for quite a bit, roughly 10 years, and I uh, spent a lot of time out of those 10 years in AI. Uh, most recently, been working on shipping AI features on the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. Welcome to Gen AI Talks. Can you talk a little bit like, what is it like designing and solving and really grappling with all these different factors to put AI in such a simple format, like even be able to talk to my glasses? You have to like be very, very particular when you're thinking about designing AI systems from an end user perspective. People should perceive these as very simple pieces of software that can be interacted with. You have to be very careful about the developer experience. The developers who are helping ship all of these experiences shouldn't get burnt out through the process. They should be able to uh, iteratively understand what value they're creating or what how the experiences are looking like to these end users that we're talking about. And most importantly, you have to think about businesses while designing these systems. AI models, AI experiences are GPU intensive, uh, data intensive, energy intensive overall. How are you tackling all of these to still make it um, sustainable for these businesses to continue to invest into these AI developments? As we look at the way products have evolved, right? Just expectations for people have gone up. What is it like how that art meets the science to make these experiences feel tactile or merely feel tangible for that end user? I think more than anything else, any AI experience being built, uh, not only the ones that we're building on glasses, we need to take the users along. This is a new space. The technology is new, but the users are the same. If Google search has been working for them and responding to them in sub-second latencies, when people are talking to the glasses or when people are talking to ChatGPT, their expectation comes from sub-second search responses that they've been getting for the last 10 years. How do you bring the users along? How do you show them value in spending a little bit more time but getting them the results that would be even more meaningful for them? When AI works well, it just feels good. You know, I, I smile when I use some of these products because it's almost like, you know, I'm using a, a kid's toy for the first time and I actually get these gleeful moments. What is it like building gleeful moments for people? Do you, do you know, like, okay, this is going to make someone smile? Do you, when you see someone smile, how does that feel? Can you bring someone into the window of being that producer of these magical moments? The thought of the product in the first place makes me smile. Hey, we will be able to achieve a day where we're just like generating images when people prompt back. But then while you're building it, you have to take so much into consideration. You have to think about system stability. You have to think about system fairness. You have to think about edge cases. A funny example that, it, uh, that exists is Google shipped the Imagine 2 uh, model and they had to pull it back. It was a multi-million dollar investment that they had to pull back. Why? Because their teams were overcautious. They spent a lot of time thinking about fairness and edge cases and responding back with inclusive images. But when people started prompting them for, hey, can you give me a result for soldiers from World War II? German soldiers, Nazi soldiers from World War II, my bad. The model would respond back with Asian men and women, which obviously is not factuality, factually correct. So the point being, when you're building these systems, you have to take care of a lot of different scenarios that can exist in reality and make sure that you're not over pivoting. I give the opportunity to you. What is something that even your peers or just generally people that are bringing these products to life uh, don't know or might be missing in today's time? A lot of people might already know this, but these are fundamentals that a majority still miss out on. There's, there's research that has been published. 80% of the projects fail either because they're uh, behind on compute or on data. The fundamentals of AI. So if you're working in the space, make sure that you have a very clear narrative to who's going to compute everything that you're thinking. 
and a very clear narrative of where are you getting all of the data that you're either training or evaluating your models on. And those are actually codes for life, you know? <laughs> Make sure you got good data and know how you're going to compute. You know, it can go for all walks of life. I know, again, people say we don't know what's going to happen in four years. We don't know what's happening in five years. I'm going to give you the liberum today to be wrong, okay? So let's go a little further. 20 years down the road, what's coming that most people aren't aware of that really might blow their minds? I think I'm super duper biased to just think about glasses as a compute platform. I've been using these in my day-to-day -day now, and I hate pulling out my phone. So I'm pretty sure like the modality of interaction for the user is definitely going to change in the next 20 years. And I feel that that modality moving towards something that's more embedded makes you more hands-free, maybe an implant uh, in, in the human brain could be a very real possibility in 20 years. Can you tell people how they can follow you, stay in tune with what you got going on, and support the work? LinkedIn is the best place to follow me. Um, also on all of social media, I work at Meta. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Feel free to find me there. Definitely. And I will be following. Awesome. Thank you for the time you there. Big ideas, real tools, bold moves. That's what Gen AI Talks is all about. Don't miss what's next. Subscribe and explore more in our Gen AI community.